Hi, I'm Bob. We will continue our solutions to the exercises in the section about trading between two people. We use the address box to find the Pareto efficient bundles of goods. That no further mutually beneficial trades are possible. I use the textbook Michael Economics Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition by Professor Jeffrey Paloff. An introductory Michael Economics course can be found in the description below. Let's get started. Let's solve exercise 2.1. Initially, Michael has 10 candy bars and 5 cookies, and Tony has 5 candy bars and 10 cookies. After trading, Michael has 12 candy bars and 3 cookies. In an address box, label the initial allocation A and the new allocation B. Draw some indifference curves that are consistent with this trade being optimal for both Michael and Tony. The initial allocation is the endowment point A, where Michael has 10 candy bars and 5 cookies, and Tony has 5 candy bars and 10 cookies. Michael's indifference curve IM1 goes through his endowment A. Tony's indifference curve IT1 also goes through the endowment A. The two indifference curves intersect, and their marginal rates of substitution are unequal. The mutually beneficial trades between Michael and Tony are possible at endowment A. After trading, the two people's indifference curves IM2 and IT2 are tangent at the new allocation B. The marginal rates of substitution of the two indifference curves are equal. Michael and Tony are both better off after trading because they are now at higher indifference curves. At the new allocation B, no further mutually beneficial trades are possible because the allocation at this point is Pareto efficient. No party can be better off without harming the other. Let's answer exercise 2.2. Explain why point E in figure 10.3 is not on the contract curve. The points on the contract curve are Pareto efficient. In other words, no further mutually beneficial trades are possible at allocations on the contract curve. Point E is not Pareto efficient because the two people can both benefit from a trade to a bundle at another point F. The allocation at point E is not Pareto efficient, so point E is not on a contract curve. Let's see exercise 2.3. The two people in a pure exchange economy have identical utility functions. Will they ever want to trade? Why or why not? Yes, it's possible that they have different marginal rates of substitution at initial endowment. They can both be better off from a trade that leads to a bundle on the contract curve. At the new bundle, the marginal rates of substitution of the two indifference curves are equal and the allocation is Pareto efficient. If the initial allocation deviates from it, the two people can trade to achieve the Pareto efficiency.
Let's solve exercise 2.4. Two people trade two goods that they cannot produce. Suppose that one consumer's indifference curves are bowed away from the origin, the usual type of curves, but the others are concave to the origin. In an Edgeworth box, show that a point of tangency. Between the two consumers, indifference curves is not a Pareto efficient bundle. Suppose Amy's indifference curves are the usual shaped convex to the origin, and Bob's indifference curves are concave to the origin. Point E is the tangency between their indifference curves, I A one and I B. The bundle at point E is not Pareto efficient because Amy can be better off without harming Bob through trading. For example, they can trade to point H. Where Amy is on a higher indifference curve, I A two, while Bob's utility is unchanged. Let's find answers to exercise two point five. Adrian and Stephen consume pizza Z and cola C. Their utility functions and endowments are as follows. In part A. What are the marginal rates of substitution for each person? The marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal utility ratio of the two goods. We can obtain each person's marginal rate of substitution at the initial endowment. Adrian's marginal rate of substitution between pizza and cola is minus two. Stephen's marginal rate of substitution between pizza and cola is minus one over two. Their marginal rate of substitutions are unequal, so the endowment is not Pareto efficient. Mutually beneficial trades are possible. In part B, what is the formula for the contract curve? Draw an address box and indicate the contract curve. For bundles on the contract curve, the marginal rates of substitution of the two parties are identical. We know that the total units of each good are thirty. We can write the contract curve in terms of one party's goods. The formula for the contract curve is a function of C A and Z A. If we express it in terms of Adrian's goods, it is a straight line. Here is the address box. Let's jump to exercise two point six. Continuing with exercise two point five, what are the competitive equilibrium prices where one price is normalized to equal one? We know that the tangency condition for utility maximization, subject to a budget constraint, is the marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio. From previous exercise, we know that on the contract curve, the two parties' marginal rates of substitution are equal, and it equals minus C A over Z A. Because the formula for the contract curve is C A equals Z A, we have the marginal rate of substitution equal to minus one. 
so the price ratio equals 1. If one price is normalized to equal 1, then the other good's price is also 1. Let's answer exercise 2.7. In a pure exchange economy with two goods, G and H, the two traders have Cobb Douglas utility functions. Suppose that Tony's and Margaret's utility functions are as follows. Between them, they own 100 units of G and 50 units of H. Solve for their contract curve. The contract curve function is a function of a person's two goods, such as Tony's two goods, GT and HT. To find the contract curve, we use the fact that on the contract curve, the two people's marginal rates of substitution are equal. Each person's marginal rate of substitution equals the negative of the marginal utility ratio of the two goods. We have equation 1. Then we use the relationship of the goods, the sum of H is 50 and the sum of G is 100, to simplify equation 1. Finally, we write the contract curve function in terms of Tony's two goods. Alternatively, we can express the contract curve in terms of Margaret's goods using the same steps. Let's solve exercise 2.8. Continuing with exercise 2.7, determine P, the competitive price of G, where the price of H is normalized to equal 1. In a competitive market, the indifference curves of both parties are tangent at the same bundle on the price line and the marginal rates of substitution echo the negative of the price ratio. This is the tangency condition for utility maximization. We use Tony's marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio to find the price of G. If the price of H is normalized to equal 1, then the price of G equals HT over GT. We express it in terms of GT only using the contract curve function. The price of G equals 50 divided by 200 minus GT. We can also use another method to find the answer. The two people's utility functions are in Cobb Douglas form, so we can write their demand functions directly. Please find the detailed information from exercises in previous chapters. Tony and Margaret's demands for H are as follows. Suppose Tony's endowment is GT and HT. His income is YT equals P times GT plus HT. Similarly, Margaret's income is as follows. We also know that the sum of H is 50. We simplify the equation to find the answer.
it is the same as the first method. GT can be seen as the unit of good G Tony has. PG is the function of GT, which means the competitive relative price of the two goods depends on the initial endowment. Given that the two people have Cobb Douglas utility functions. Thank you for doing all the exercises with me today. See you soon in the next section of the chapter. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.